Hey guys, it's Pastor Tyler. Hey, I just want to tell you, I know this is less than ideal. Um, things are kind of changing rapidly, and so we're not able to meet all together. But I want you guys to know that we love you. And so I'm just going to share a couple thoughts with you. And um, for real, know that we're here for you. Um, just because we can't uh, have youth group doesn't mean we can't connect. Doesn't mean you can't hit me up on my phone or on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, so we're just going to talk about the word for a minute. And uh, the best way to stay connected in general is just make sure you like our Instagram page and uh, follow this YouTube account for announcements and services from the whole church. And um, I want to challenge you with this before we get started. Um, today, after you watch this video, um, text or snap or whatever, TikTok, you guys are cooler than me, whatever you do, um, at least three people and just ask them their thoughts about it and continue to um, just talk together about it. So um, first thing I want to talk to you is just fear. Uh, I think that's kind of a thing that's going on for everybody right now. You know, there's people that are afraid and they're going to buy a bunch of toilet paper and then there's people that didn't get to buy toilet paper and so they're afraid they're going to have to start sacrificing some socks. So, you know, there's a lot of fear. Um, but a couple pretty common fears, um, I'm going to say them out and then I want to see if you know them. So I guess this is kind of like Blue's Clues because I'm going to pause awkwardly for a minute and then you can yell at your screen. So um, the first one, um, arachnophobia, what is that? Great job. Yes, it's the fear of spiders. That's really goofy, but I'm going to still do it a couple more times. Um, okay, what about um, a phidiophobia? Y'all know what that one is? Snakes. Um, you have uh, acrophobia. Anybody got a guess on that? It's not the fear of acrobats, but close, fear of heights. Um, so there's all sorts of other things. Um, claustrophobia. Anybody claustrophobic? Guilty. Fear of small spaces. Um, Megan and I, our apartment right now, we'd love it, but thinking about being stuck there forever is kind of making it feel like it's closing in a little bit. Um, but I just want to tell you guys about some of my fears. So I'm totally afraid of spiders. Um, if you want to hear an extremely embarrassing story about that, please message Megan and she will tell you. Um, but you have to promise not to judge me on that. So um, there's all sorts of different fears people have. I know a lot of people um, that are afraid of heights. Um, I'm not afraid, but I don't like to go to the bathroom in public, so I guess that's technically a fear. I have a shy bladder. Um, I'm saying a lot of things that are really embarrassing, knowing that they're going to be on YouTube. But um, I just want to ask you guys, um, what's a completely non-scary thing that you used to be afraid of? Um, when we went to NYC this summer with my youth group from Kansas, uh, a couple of my students were totally afraid of a zip line, and uh, so they... One of them did not do it, and that's okay, she tried. The other one, um, she was up there, and she was strapped in, and she was ready to go, and then she was like, no, I'm out. So I did the really good youth pastor thing. You guys know what I did? I pushed her. I pushed her right off the edge, and she screamed, but then she started laughing, and by the end of it, she didn't kill me, and she was thankful. So sometimes facing our fears um, is a really good thing. A lot of us, uh, maybe we're afraid of the darkest kids and got over it, or some of us. Are still afraid of the dark and that's okay um, but I want to uh, just share this quote with you guys that I found this week it says this it says there's a difference when the Bible tells you to have no fear the Bible isn't dismissing your fears as illogical or dumb the Bible gives situations where your fears are well founded and then says don't be afraid what do you guys think about that do you think that's true do you think that's different or similar to other advice that you've gotten um, I know for me in all of this um, with coronavirus and all this, I go back and forth. You know, sometimes I am really afraid and I'm like, oh no, what is happening? And then other times I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. If everybody would just wash their hands and not steal toilet paper, we would be good. So wherever you're at in that, like, I want you to understand God is not saying you can't be afraid. God is not saying, hey, um, if, there's, if you're afraid there's something wrong with you. Absolutely not. We all have fears, right? I think what God wants us to, to grasp is this truth um, that he has about fear. And so John 14, 27 says this. It's Jesus talking to his disciples um, right after he has just told them, he's just washed their feet, and he's just told Peter that Peter is going to deny him three times um, right around the time of the crucifixion. And Jesus says this in John 14, 27. He says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Like I said, Jesus says this to his disciples um, right before uh, the, last, um, the last time he sees them, right? Like right before they see him get arrested, right before they see him go to trial, right before they see him get crucified. And so he's not saying, 
um, hey, if you're scared, there's something wrong with you. No, he's saying, hey, let me give you peace in a scary situation. Um, he said he gives two kinds of peace, not the kind the world gives. So I want you to look at that and think, what is the peace that he gives? And then send me a text or send me a message. What is the peace you feel like Jesus gives? And then the other question, which I think all of us have at least one answer the same, but where do you need peace from Jesus in your life right now? Where is it, what's happening, where you're like, God, I, do, I just need some peace. Uh, Psalm 46, uh, verse 1 through 3 says this. It says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. So here's my question for you. If the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, uh, what is one dessert you wish you could have had one more time? Think about it for a minute. For me, uh, some of our friends in Kansas, uh, my friend Josh and his wife Mina, she makes the most delicious thing ever. It's called ooey gooey butter cake. And so like, if I was like, man, you know, the world's ending, I would want some ooey gooey butter cake. So what about for you? What's that thing that you would want? Um, but besides like something crazy and kind of a goofy question, I want to just ask you a real question. Um, for real though, like when you feel like your world is shaking, when you feel like your world is falling apart, um, what do you want from God? Or where do you feel like you can cling to him? Um, so I, I just want us to maybe take an inventory for a minute and just ask a couple questions. And the first one is this. Um, do you trust God the most? Or do you sometimes put other trust above God? Do you think, yeah, I really trust you, God, but if you'd let me take this one, I think I could design it better. I think that happens to us when we don't know God's word, right? Like if we know God's word, if we know this book, if we are in it, then we can have verses come to mind. God speaks to us through his word. And so in all this time, and let me tell you, I get it. There's all sorts of things you can binge on Netflix and Hulu. And please send me recommendations because Megan and I are running out and I'm so tired of watching Frozen 2. Please don't tell Kennedy. But there's all sorts of ways you can spend your time. But I think the most important way we can spend our time is this, is spending it with God, right? For whatever reason, this coronavirus is happening and I don't think that it's God's intent for the coronavirus to happen, but I do think that God can use this for his glory. And so my question to you, my question to myself really from God has been this, what am I doing in this time to grow my relationship with God? And out of that, how am I being a person of hope in a time when people are really freaked out? How am I saying, yes, I'm scared too, but I don't have this dread. I don't have this total fear that's just taking over me because I know Jesus, because I know that he's good, because I know his word tells us that he promises peace and that he's going to be with us in trouble. And so kind of to end, I just want to challenge you guys to memorize the verse this week. And the verse is this, Psalm 56, 3. It says this, it's super simple. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. It's a psalmist David talking to God and saying, God, yeah, I'm afraid, but I'm going to choose to put my trust in you. So I want to challenge you to memorize that. Psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And this week, in situations where you can be afraid, uh, one way that you can respond is just, just praying that verse and saying, God, help me to trust you. God, I want to trust you. Help me to do that. And so share with us. Share. Tag us on social media. Do whatever it is you do. Text somebody that you know and just say, hey, I'm afraid too. But God is trusty, is trustworthy. And so I'm going to put my trust in him. Um, know this guys like this is different this is crazy listen nowhere in school did someone say hey here's how to be a youth pastor in a pandemic right like this is nuts this is unprecedented and i hate that we can't be together but i get it because we may not get sick you guys especially you guys may not get sick but in doing this social distancing thing it helps us to protect people um, that we love people like our grandparents people that have um, immunosuppression uh, because of kidney disease or CF or whatever it is. And so know that we're here for you, though. Um, please, please, please make wise choices in this. I know the temptation is to say, you know what, whatever, we're going to all get together. We're going to run around town. But but let's try our best to, to set the example. Um, if you're getting together, if you choose to do that, like we can't stop you, right? But please, please, please try to follow those rules that are recommending. You know, stay six feet apart. Stay in groups of less than 10 people. Um, but know that I'm here. Know that all of our awesome youth leaders are here. And you're going to see a screen here in a minute that shows you their contact info. And also this. 
in those times when you're together with your friends, think about that person that's not there. Maybe that person you don't know well, or that person that you know has a really crappy home life, and just text them and invite them, or, or ask how you can help. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can be involved uh, coming up. If you're 16 or older, starting next week, we're doing a sports camp here at the church for the kids of doctors and nurses and first responders. And so I'll have a link here that you can go to to volunteer for that. Um, and uh, so know that we're here and do this, man. There's a lot of ways you can spend your time. And I get it. Watch a lot of shows. Um, try out crazy snap filters, but also spend time with Jesus, okay? I'm going to pray for you. I'm not going to pray right now because I feel like that would be awkward for you to see me close my eyes and pray. Um, but know that know that we love you. Know that we're here for you guys. And if there's anything at all we can do, um, if you just need someone to talk to, or if you're just super bored, you're like, man, I want to do something, um, holler at me, holler at the other sponsors. Um, we love you guys. We'll see you later. Bye.